नमस्कार माय नेम इज सुदशील घोष आई एम टीचिंग यू टिंकर कैड ऑन यूट्यूब वेलकम टू माय चैनल एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न द अल्ट्रासोनिक सेंसर अ बिट मोर सो वी आर गोइंग टू यूज सम कंडीशनिंग सिस्टम द कंडीशनिंग सिस्टम एंड देर फोर वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ वी कैन इम्प्लीमेंट अ पार्किंग असिस्टेंट यूजिंग द अल्ट्रासोनिक सेंसर and a light emitting diode so we will in this exercise we will use only a single light emitting diode and uh, later maybe we can use multiple light emitting diodes so let us begin with our exercise today okay fine so we will go ahead and create our circuit so we'll go here and as soon as we load this is the working area and this is where the components are just for the sake of repetition we are having the breadboard first of course you need to put the breadboard and uh, we will put the breadboard in a different manner we will rotate the breadboard here because even if you remember that in the last exercise we rotated the arduino so we will also do the same thing in this time also so we will rotate the arduino like this and we will put the arduino and the breadboard like this as we know that you will need to connect the led now and the led has to be connected through the resistor to the ground and the other part of the led the anode part of the led is going to so let us revise the led here if we look at the led here we see that this is the cathode and this is the anode if i if i can repeat whatever we have covered last time if we place the led like this this is the wrong placement because these are internally connected to each other and therefore we will not be able to let the led glow because if they are connected to each other they will be at the same potential so therefore the led will not glow the best place where the led can be connected is somewhere here so we will connect the led now the led will require the supply of the ground so what we will do is we will put the ground here and let us do that okay so how to connect the ground to the breadboard we will try to see now okay so let us see so this is the ground here and we are going to try to connect the ground with the breadboard now okay so now let us do that so we'll take the ground from here we'll take it here okay and then we are going to take it here and we have now connected the ground to the breadboard okay now from the ground we will need to use a resistor okay so from the ground so we are having the resistor here and as we tell you that again if we can play if you place the resistor like this it is of no use because at both the terminals of the resistor there will be the same potential that will be of no use okay so therefore the resistor is not in the right position so we are going to rotate the resistor now like this and if we connect like this but it, what it will mean is that the ground is coming to this particular point this particular point is going to this terminal and we have the particular ground connected through the resistor to this particular column we'll call this a column now okay now we have to connect the ground to the cathode of the resistor so how can we do that we just take the connection from here and we connect it to here fine now what are we going to do with the led okay now if i want to connect the uh, okay let me place the led a bit more far okay let us do that and we will remove this particular connection we will try to for the sake of convenience we are going to connect the led a bit more far so that we have a lot of space okay so now we have connected the cathode of the resistor to this particular column 
through the register it is going to the ground okay so we have achieved this particular mechanism all right now let us try to connect the led first we will try to connect the led first so we are going to connect pin number 3 so just for the sake of example we are connecting pin number 3 we can choose any other pin whatever we want so we are going to take the wire from here and connect it directly to pin number 3 okay so the connection is completed why because the cathode of the led is connected to this particular ground by using the register here so we have been able to connect our led completely and the led anode of the led is connected to this particular digital pin which is the third digital pin now our aim is to let the led blink now to make the led blink we have to turn it on wait for some time and then turn it off fine so this is what we are going to do so turn it on and then turn it off so let us put everything into the trash now okay so now you see set pin number zero to high it is written here as i told you the led is connected to pin number three so we are going to connect this to pin number three and we are setting the pin number three to high then we are going to wait for some time so let us wait for maybe 0 0.5 seconds okay so we have waited for 0 0.5 seconds now again we are going to duplicate this so duplication will reduce my work so essentially now this is high so therefore we are going to put it as low and if you run the simulation the led is going to glow two times okay see you see the led has started blinking so we have successfully implemented the led blinking process now now we are going to interface the ultrasonic sensor as i told you earlier that the ultrasonic sensor will require the vcc the ground then the trigger pin and the echo pin okay fine so there are we are now going to connect the ultrasonic sensor to the breadboard first so we we'll let us see the ultrasonic sensor now the ultra okay and as i told you last time that we are going to take the ultrasonic sensor which has four pins you can also choose to take the single pin the three pin ultrasonic sensor also okay so now we are going to rotate this in order to connect it properly to the breadboard so we are going to connect this to the breadboard now so as we can see here that the vcc is connected to this point okay we have the trigger pin and we have the eco pin so for the sake of convenience we are going to shift this particular place here so you will have a sufficiently good connection with the arduino okay so let us try to connect our system with the arduino how do i do that now okay so let us try and see we have got the vcc here so we need a connection from the 5 volt supply here to the particular now remember that this particular row this particular row hasn't yet been connected anywhere so we are going to connect this row to the 5 volt supply here okay so let us do that so we are going to connect this 5 volt supply take it here and we are going to connect it to this particular row okay so now what has happened is the this entire particular row has been supplied with the 5 volt supply okay it is connected to the 5 volt supply the entire 5 volt supply is distributed over this row i need a connection from this row to the grounds okay let, let us do that so how do i do this now remember that we have this particular row as the ground so we will need one connection from here to this particular pin and we will need one connection from here to this particular pin so we are going to do it in two phases okay fine so let us try to do that how do i do this okay so we are going to take this 
connection from here and we can connect it here okay so therefore what has happened is that the 5 volt supply is coming through this particular wire and coming here in this particular column okay so in case if we want to have more space we can create this particular connection all right so therefore this particular column has the 5 volt supply okay now from one connection from here to the vcc we have got the 5 volt supply connected to this particular pin now so therefore the power which is the power pin is connected to the 5 volt supply fine okay now we need to connect our ground to the ground row so this is the ground row as i told you this is the ground row so what we have to do is connect from here to this particular row okay and then we are going to connect from here to this particular column if we do that then what has happened is now remember that because this particular row this is this is a continuous wire so it is not interfering with this particular wire all right okay also these are insulated wires so they are not interfering with each other so we have connected our ground to this particular pin now we need to we need two things number one we need the trigger pin and we need the eco pin so what we will do is we will connect the pin number 13 with the trigger pin okay we have done that and we have connected pin number 12 with the eco pin okay so what is our objective now we have made the connections but what is our objective now? Our objective is that whenever this distance between the object and the sensor becomes less than say 70 or less than 100, this LED will start blinking. Now remember that we have already implemented the blinking code to the LED in this because if we, if we start the simulation here, the LED is blinking. We haven't made any coding with respect to this particular sensor as of yet. So even if we connect, it is not going to affect. All right. So remember that the eco, the trigger pin is at pin number 13. And the eco pin is at pin number 12. Fine. So how do I proceed now? We will go into the coding mode. Let us go into coding. Now, I have to read the distance sensed by this particular thing into the variable. So we have to create one single variable. So what do I do? I'll just go to variable here and we click on a variable. So we'll name the variable as this, as we did in the last exercise. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is set this distance variable here. So we are going to right put it, this put this thing here. Don't worry, we'll, we'll separate it like that. Right now we are going to separate it. Okay, so what is the variable? we are going to read the information from the ultrasonic sensor now remember if i want to read the information from the ultrasonic sensor we have to go to the input now remember that my trigger pin is on 13 and eco pin is on 12 okay so we have to read the ultrasonic systems sensor now we are going to put that ultrasonic sensor here and we have to set the trigger pin to 13 okay so we are setting the trigger pin to 13 now and we have to set the eco pin to 12 okay so eco pin will be set to 12 okay so now we have read the distance now since we have been able to read the distance we have to set the distance to this particular red ones okay now what i want to do is whenever the distance is going to become now if i if i run the simulation right now nothing is going to happen because this is going to glow because the connection is not complete this the connection between this part of the code and this part of the code is also not complete so nothing is going to happen as of now now if we place the pointer here what we are seeing is when when this thing is going to be less than say 100 the led should blink that is what my idea is okay so whenever the distance is less than 100 it should blink so that means I have to use what you call as a condition. Okay. Now let us see where the conditions are available. Okay. So now let us see where the conditions are available. The conditions are available here. Okay. So if then else this condition is here. All right. So what I'm saying is if the distance is less than 100, then it should do something. 
and if the distance is more than 100 of course if it is not less than 100 it will be more than or equal to 100 so therefore we have to do something so we are going to take this further down all right we are going to take this further down we'll take this further down and so we are now going to put this particular conditioning system here so when we do this conditioning system we have to compare the distance and the number 100 so let us try to do that we have we can compare using this math here so you can see that this is the less than or equal to this look at the shape here and look at the shape here so this is going to usually fit here okay so now at this particular point there is one written here but i want to compare the distance not one so what we have to do go to variable and take distance here okay and here if distance is less than 100 so we'll put 100 here okay so if the distance is less than 100 then i will make the led blink okay so let me do that so i am going to take this here this part of the code here and we're going to fit it here so what has happened is if the distance is a less than 100 the blinking code is going to be implemented otherwise if it is more than or equal to 100 then the led should be off so i have to make sure that the led is off so how do i do we just go here and we are going to set the pin number three to off okay so we are not putting high we are putting it as low and we have put the entire thing now like this and so therefore if you run so let us run the code now okay if we run the code now what is happening see if it is more than 100 it is more than 100 161.9 here if it is more than 100 the led does not glow as we go okay less than 100 uh, okay so we are going now it is more than 100 a bit we go less than 100 and the led starts blinking if you are new to my channel please like share and subscribe if you are old subscriber to my channel please share this video and also tell your friends to attend my demo sessions thank you very much for attending we will stop the simulation right now